Norway is a member of the EEA, the European Economic Area, and in, in addition to that, they've also got lots of other agreements. So, for example, they are signed up to the Schengen Agreement. Um, the PRO, I think, was very clear from our visit there. Um, Norwegian businesses has access to the single market, um, but they still have the flexibility to, to go their own way on some issues, so fisheries, for example. Uh, the con is that um, they implement the rules later because they've got to be agreed among EU member states first and that creates uncertainty for businesses. They don't quite know what the rules are going to be. So that's one disadvantage. But I think the most significant um, uh, negative impact is their lower level of influence. So they don't have a commissioner clearly, they don't have any members in the European Parliament. And, and basically, they have to follow the rules, they've got to pay the bills, but they don't have a lot of influence. So Switzerland has 120 or so agreements with the European Union, and those agreements give them access to the single market uh, in some parts, but not in all parts. So, for example, services aren't covered. That has some advantages. They have, you could say, access with some flexibility. Uh, they are able to trade and goods of, I think it's about 1 billion Swiss francs cross the border between Switzerland and the EU um, every day. So that's a big um, advantage, but there are also some significant disadvantages. Um, they don't have a seat at the table, and although in theory they have a lot of flexibility, in practice they often choose to implement the same rules um, as they have in other EU member states because they find that that's necessary to give them access. We should also be realistic about how time-consuming and bureaucratic it's been to uh, negotiate these 120 agreements. It's taken a very long time. Our conclusion is that halfway houses might work in Norway, they might work in Switzerland, but they wouldn't work in the UK. We would have to leave the EU, we'd find ourselves at the margins of the world's biggest trading bloc, operating under rules over which we have no influence. It doesn't solve any of the challenges uh, with the UK's current relationship with the EU, and the idea of taking somebody else's rules without being able to influence them doesn't give us any greater sovereignty whatsoever.